Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about FTP. What it is, what is it needed for, and how important it is for us as athletes and as coaches. So stick around for the video. My name is Pedro and I'm a professional triathlete and certified triathlon and cycling coach living in Arizona. I was the first Portuguese athlete to win a full Ironman race and for the past 8 years I've been helping others achieve their goals in endurance sports. So let me start by explaining what this FTP thing is all about. FTP stands for Functional Threshold Power and it is a theoretical value in watts of what an athlete can sustain for a one hour maximum effort on the bike. It is also a value a cycling or a triathlon coach uses to define the athlete's training zones. So in other words, the FTP is an important value that defines your training and that can be used to track progress over time. Both as a coach and athlete, I believe that power is the best metric to use in cycling workouts. Power is just an instant metric which can track the intensity of an interval regardless, regardless of its duration. And it's a very objective metric. Whatever power is being generated, it is what it is. Heart rate, on the other hand, takes a while to catch up with the effort and there are more external vari variables that can influence. In a perfect world, we use both power and heart rate, but power is still the best metric. Obviously, it is important to use the same power meter and a precise one for consistent results from training session to training session. Interestingly, uh, power and heart rate usually evolve in opposite directions. The more fit and developed an athlete is, the lower and the heart rate is for the same amount of power that is being generated and the higher the overall maximum power is. So by now you're probably wondering how do I calculate my FTP? The easiest way to calculate your FTP is by doing a 20 minute maximum effort on the bike and multiplying the average of that effort by 0.95. As I mentioned early in this video, this is a theoretical FTP value because it's almost impossible to do a one hour maximum effort without failing the pacing. It is still difficult to pace a 20 minute interval test, but it's easier than an hour interval test. After finding the FTP, I think the first question in every athlete's head is how do I improve it? Uh, because obviously the higher the FTP, the better the fitness, right? There are no answer fits all on how much you can raise your FTP and how fast you can do it. Everyone is unique and responds differently to training. It would, be all, it would be the same as answering how fit can an athlete be, something that is very unlikely any coach can really know without knowing the genetic predisposition of the athlete or having experience with the athlete. But some things we do know. There, there is a ceiling to the FTP, your FTP, and obviously everyone has a different one. The closer you get to your FTP ceiling, the harder it is to improve it. So for a well-developed athlete, an improvement of uh, 2 to 4 watts in a 4 to 5 week period can be massive. While for someone coming straight off the couch, it is not odd to have an increase of 20 to 30 watts in the same period. The FTP number also depends on the weight of the athlete. The heavier the athlete is, the more power it can generate, or the, the more power the athlete generates. This does ne not necessarily mean he will be faster, because a lighter cyclist also needs less power to move at the same speed. Another important factor is genetics. There is a wide variety uh, of responses to training based on our genes. Some studies show that there can be an improvement of FTP between 15 and 88 percent. Quite an interval, right? Um, and this is for individuals that undergo the same training. Something that also happens on, for instance, VO2 max improvements. Genetics plays a big part on how fast you improve. Let's put it this way. If we separate training in bulk between endurance training and sprint training, and since both can influence your FTP and fitness levels, studies have shown that some athletes respond better to endurance training 
while others respond better to sprint training. What you, think from, what you take from this is that you always have some kind of response to whatever the type of training you endure. But the recipe between endurance and, and sprint differs and it's very unique to each individual. What differentiates uh, elite athletes from non-elite athletes is that elite athletes are generally high or faster responders to training in general while non-elite athletes are just responders to one type of training or just slower responders. An example of this is when you have two athletes racing each other and the one with less hours uh, of training wins. Especially on short uh, events, the genetic predisposition plays a big role on the outcome. On the longer events, the more work you put in, the better you become. This is when the famous quotes when the going gets tough, the tough get going, and hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work, come into play. Knowing this, it is easy to understand why is it so hard to predict improvements of FTP values. But although genetics can be a limitation, it does not mean you should give up or lose hope on improving your FTP. FTP is still a great metric to, or a great value to track and measure fitness over time, especially when you first get into sports or are just coming out of the off season. And while some have a quicker or bigger response, everyone does have a response to training. So even if it takes you longer, if you do the work, you will still get the result. So next question on an athlete's mind would be, what is the expectation, uh, expectation to, for improvement, let's say in a year period? Based on my experience as a coach, uh, if you have never trained for endurance sports, your FTP may increase as much as 60 watts in a year. However, if you continue to, continue to train uh, while you can expect to still gain a decent amount of power over the first few years, the numbers are not as big or over every year. Uh, what I've noticed is that the improvements is usually half of the previous year. For example, if on year one you will go from you go from 100 watt FTP to 150, on year two, you may just go from 150 to 175, and on year three, only go from 175 to 186 or 188 and so on. Quick note to mention that this does not necessarily apply to younger or junior athletes, since the body's development will naturally, will naturally boost the fitness improvements. And just in a year period, big increases on FTP can be expected. That steep improvement tends to stabilize as the athlete gets older. With older, older uh, seasoned athletes, I'm take, uh, talking about uh, if you're 40, 50 years old, something different happens. VO2 max decreases naturally with age, since VO2 also uh, influences FTP, the goal starts to be preserving the FTP over the years rather than trying to increase it. Because obviously they're, they're related and the older you get, the harder it is to sustain it over time. Improving the FTP depends on training and training can be translated as applying stress to the body. The fittest you become, the more stress you will have to apply to improve. This happens because the, the body adapts to a certain amount of training stress from exercises and starts making uh, adaptations. Uh, more volume or intensity or even both are necessarily to push the body further to make those adaptations needed to gain further fitness. A well thought out plan is therefore important and one, uh, one that progressively builds training and or pro progressively builds training with intensity and volume, accounts for recovery periods and stress through other activities, name, uh, namely weightlifting, uh, so you can add more quality and increase the stress of the workout or each day. But the thing is, FTP is not the only marker for fitness. Other factors count, and this is especially true uh, uh, for well-developed athletes. 
I'm talking about repeatability and efficiency. By repeatability, I refer to the number of short intervals that you, that you can do at FTP, either under or over, and the ability to sustain the effort, recover and repeat. And this will increase over a period of time, even if your FTP stays the same. Efficiency is the ability to sustain long and increasingly longer intervals at below FTP. And this is especially important for Ironman athletes. So after maximizing your FTP, repeatability and efficiency are the things to consider. More even if you're aiming for long distance races when more time is spent below FTP. For Ironman athletes, the value is between 70 to 80% of the FTP, while for half Ironman athletes, they can aim uh, between 80 to 90% of their FTP. And this is why I wanted to share this video. I believe that the FTP is an important number to define training zones and track progress on the initial phase. However, over time, that value becomes less important and repeatability and mostly efficiency become key. So don't stress too much about your FTP value. Fitness is a complex matter and cannot be summed or summed with one single number. I just, I just want to leave a final note for those who feel they have hit the plateau on their fitness gains. Take a break, a mid-season break. And, and by break, I mean take four or five days off. No easy jogs, no friendly bike rides, no swimming, no gym, no CrossFit, or any sort of training or cross training. I know, crazy. <laughs> um, you'll feel horrible when you get back to training, but just for a few days. Your power numbers will quickly come around on the second week back to training, and it will boost your training for the second half of the season without taking anything away from the training you've done on the first half of the year. And that's it guys, hope you find this video helpful. Share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't so. Be safe out there and catch up next week on a new video about training. Bye now.